I first heard like a version of this story in 1982. I was a student at NYU and I took a screenwriting class. And the teachers were Ring Larder Jr., Ian McClellan Hunter, and Waldo Salt. Well, uh, Waldo Salt. And I was in an elevator one night with Ian, and I was desperate to suck up to him in some way to improve my grade, which at the moment was not going to be that great. And I said, oh, Mr. Hunter, I saw your, your movie last night. I saw Roman Holiday at a revival house. And he, he was a somewhat dour but very witty, very dry, ironic man. And he smoked a pipe. And he pulled on his pipe. This is back when you could smoke in elevators. And he said to me, I didn't write Roman Holiday. My good friend Dalton Trumbo did. And I said, what? I don't understand what do you mean. Why is your name on it? And he said, well, The Blacklist. And I was 20 years old. It was 1982. And I said, what's The Blacklist? So we came into class. There were about 15 of us in this class. And the professors, Ring, Ian, Waldo, who had all been blacklisted, and Ring had gone to jail, uh, as did Dalton Trumbo, asked the class, who here knows about the blacklist? No one raised their hand. So for the next two classes, they told us the entire story from their point of view of what had happened. I said to Kevin, sit down, and I, I proceeded to tell him the story of Dalton Trumbo's career and life from 1947 when he was first called before HUAC to 1970 when he gave his sort of famous speech at the WGA when he won the Laurel Award. And Kevin said to me, that's a movie. And I said, what's a movie? He said, that story is a movie. I said, why is that a movie? He said, because it is the rarest most exceptional thing in all of storytelling. It's a true story with a happy ending. I can actually prove this with a handwritten piece of paper I have in my files. The very first name I wrote on that list was Jay Roach because I'm such a fan of, not obviously of Austin Powers, Meet the Parents, everyone loves those movies, but uh, I'm such a huge fan and was at that time in the thrall of Game Change, which had just come out, I think, that summer in, in 2012, and I was a huge fan of Recount. And I saw specific strengths that, that Jay has as a director that would be uniquely, we could apply to, to Trumbo, not the least of which was, how do you bring famous historical figures and, and, and thread them into a story with other characters who are well-known but not as visually famous. You know, we had the challenge of John Wayne, Kirk Douglas, Hedda Hopper, who's maybe less well-known, Otto Preminger, but these fairly ti titanic figures, you know, uh, and they'd have to fit with Dalton Trumbo, who really no one but a few of us know what he looked or sounded like, and his wife Cleo and his daughter Nicola. So, I really felt Jay was the guy for that, and, and fortunately, thank God, so did Jay. I said, get ready for this movie to wrap, and you're going to go back to your life, and you're going to miss this guy. He's like, how do you know? I go, because I finished the script two months ago, and I missed the guy terribly. He was in my life every day for six years. In some, it was always a day, a part of every day was devoted to his bravery, his, <laughs> his profligacy, which I so, man, did I relate to that. When I found out he built his own lake, oh, I'm like, you can do that? <laughs> my wife would kill me <laughs> if I built a lake. Um, I mean, I just, I loved his temper. I loved his righteousness. I loved his sense of language is unparalleled. That is his true complexity, was the balancing of, of this incredibly, uh, I think, volatile personal family life as it became in the 50s, as he was so pressurized by the blacklist and trying to break it and, you know, balancing that with a, a writing career and a 
writing career underground and and a political uh, political activism that I think is it's it certainly his political activism and the success of his campaign is I don't think there's another story like it in Hollywood I, I honestly am stunned, amazed, and grateful that no one's ever tried to tell the story before. It's so sad to, to think, what if the blacklist hadn't happened? What would Trump have written with his name on it in 55? What would Ring Lardner have written in 55 with his name on it? What would Michael Wilson have written in, in 1955 with his name on it? What kind of movies would David Lean have made if he could have worked with those writers openly? You know, what kind of movies would Robert Rosen have made if he hadn't informed in order to make The Hustler, which is a great movie, but, you know, he had six, seven years of being blacklisted before that, before he finally had to, felt he had to name names. So the answer to the question is, I just, I think that we had to suffer blandness. My favorite section of the movie that I wrote, you know, and rewrote and rewrote and rewrote, was when Otto Preminger and Kirk Douglas are then vying for Trumbo's attention and affection, and then he's pitting them against each other, you know, and then suddenly they're racing to see who's going to be the first guy to give him a credit. That was so fun to live in that time, and, and I miss that so much with those two mountainous egomaniacs being manipulated by a genius. you feel you should fight, fight. Doesn't matter if, if you're to the right of Trumbo or the left of Trumbo or you're in, in alignment with Trumbo. It, what matters is uh, to be an American is to have the right to fight, debate in a civil way and achieve your goals, you know, whatever those goals are. You know, they can be completely selfish. And as long as they're not harmful, they should be pursued. You know, we have the right to pursue happiness. Trumbo said, we don't have the right to happiness. We have the right to pursue happiness. And I, and I think he pursued happiness in his own completely crazy, unique, amazing, and ultimately victorious way.